All right, guys, this is part one of a review of a unit that covered polynomials and exponential functions and radical expressions. So we're going to be covering a lot, but in this video, we're going to focus on uh, simplifying exponential and radical expressions. Let's check it out. Looking at number one, if you multiply um, two exponential expressions that have the same base, then uh, what you need to do is add those exponents. So this is going to be the same thing as 5 to the 1 half plus 3 halves power. Okay, when you multiply with like bases, you add the exponents. Um, luckily for us, these exponents already have uh, common denominators, so these will be very easy to add. 1 half plus 3 halves would be 4 halves. <clears throat> um, but 4 halves, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's just 5 squared. And in fact, uh, that's so easy to do, we might as well go ahead and put 25. Okay, so there's your answer number 1. Now take a look at number 2. Remember, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. Um, so we need to multiply these two powers. So let me write it a little bit more properly. Um, so when we multiply these, I'm talking about x to the two-thirds power times five halves power. Okay, um, maybe another color will help. All right, we are multiplying these two things. And when you multiply, you just multiply straight across. Now, um, if you're like me, you notice that you can just cancel out these twos now. So it's going to be, the answer is going to wind up being x to the 5 over 3 power. All right? And uh, I can see that immediately because these twos will just cancel out. Um, but some students can't handle that. So um, for them, they need to go, oh, 2 times 5 is 10 and 3 times 2 is 6. So they would have this middle step. Uh, but then you have to reduce this, you see, um, by dividing both of these by 2. And that's what leads you to your x to the 5 over 3 power. So either way, that's the final answer for number 2. Looking at number 3. Um, well, if you have a negative power, um, that negative means you're going to drop that expression down to the denominator. So um, this is starting off in the numerator. It's got to drop down. So I'm going to have y to the 3 over 2 power. Uh, but it's in the bottom, so I need a 1 in the top. All right, so that's the final answer for number 3. By the way, pay attention to the directions. Um, the directions say simplify using the property of exponents. It doesn't say anything about changing into radical form. So I do not need to take this and put cube root of x to the fifth. And I don't need to ch change this denominator to be the square root of y to the third. So um, if it doesn't say something about changing into radical form, then uh, don't do that. All right, moving on to number four. Simplify using the properties of radicals. Now, um, notice that both of these are square roots. And uh, if you have uh, the same root like this, you can go ahead and do the multiplication. So five times two is 10. So radical five times radical two is radical 10. And uh, really, that's it. That is the final answer right there. Uh, there is no perfect square. That 4 doesn't go into uh, 10. Um, 9 doesn't divide evenly into 10. So that's all you can do with that. I feel a sneeze coming on, you guys. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. All right. Um, look, number 5 is pretty tricky if you don't know certain multiplication facts ahead of time. All right? Um, doing it without these multiplication facts would be very tough. But 
Um, you should at some point have memorized all of your perfect squares at least through 15. So um, for example, I know you know all the ones up through 10, right? So you know, if I say 9 squared, you're, you're going 81. Of course, 10 squared, that's 100. Okay, but what's 11 squared? That's 121. See, right here is where I start losing a couple people. Um, so make sure you know these last five perfect squares that I really need to memorize. Um, what about 12 squared? Do you know that one? Uh, that's 144. All right. What about 13 squared, guys? That's 169. And what about 14 squared? All right, and this is about to come into play right now. See the 14? 14 squared is 196. Hmm. Hmm. And let's do one more. 15 squared is 225. Um, so in addition to all of your perfect squares up to 100, you should know these five additional uh, perfect squares by heart. Um, you know, memorize them right now, practice them today, if you didn't already know them. Because if you do, then when you see 196, you think to yourself, oh, 196? That's just 14 squared. And, because uh, that's what we need to do. So what we have is the cube root of 14 times the cube root of 14 squared. Okay, so it's similar to Think about it. If you had n times n squared, what would that be? Yeah, that would be n to the third power, I hope you can see. So guess what? If I have 14 times 14 squared, I can stick a little 14 in here. If I have 14 times 14 squared, that's going to be 14 to the third power. And that's what we're doing. Since these are both cube root, we can do this multiplication inside. So I'm going to have the cube root of, now 14 times 14 squared is 14 to the third power. Now, when you have the cube root and uh, the third power, these two operations cancel each other out. So the cube root of something cubed is just the number. So this would just be 14. Okay, uh, cube root cancels out third power. So <clears throat> that's why the answer is just going to be 14. So that's one way to do it. Um, it just occurred to me another way to do it. So I'm going to go back and do it that way as well. So here's the other way to do it. <clears throat> okay, um, the other way, maybe, maybe I'll just erase all of this. Erase it all. The other way to do it is um, you could go ahead and multiply this right now. 14 times 196. Uh, I need my calculator for that. 14 times 196. That's 2,700. And did I see 44? because I have a bad memory. 2,744. Now, um, normally the calculator will not simplify a uh, cube root for you. It'll just give you a decimal. Uh, unless it happens to be a perfect cube. So if you had done this problem and just crossed your fingers hoping this was a perfect cube, um, in this particular problem, you would have uh, lucked out. Now, here's how you put this in your calculator. If you want to do the cube root, you have to start with the 3. And then, um, if you look, you know, let me blow this up. <clears throat> then, if you look at the button that is, uh, hang on. <clears throat> if you look at the button that is the carrot. Look above the carrot and you see that little x root. If you, uh, because it's above, you have to hit second carrot. And that turns this into cube root. 
And now I believe it was 2,744. So, oh, look at that. The cube root of 2,744 is 14. All right, so you would have lucked out because it did happen to be a perfect cube. So that's two different ways you could do it. Um, but now let's look at number six. <clears throat> well, look, both of these are perfect squares, and these are square roots. So the square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three. So kabam! Done and done. All right, here on number seven, we are supposed to rationalize the denominator. That means we need to uh, rewrite this so that there is no radical in the denominator. Well, remember what we learned a long time ago, the pattern. Um, say if we had radical two times radical two. Well, that would be radical four, which is two. Say if I had radical three times radical three. Well, that would be radical nine, which is three. But you see the pattern. All right, radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. Um, once you see that, then you realize that you can definitely skip this middle step. Okay, so let's kick it up a notch. Uh, so, you know, if we have radical 5 times radical 5, what's that? 5. You know, skip the middle step. Um, if you have radical 13 times radical 13, that's 13. All right, so the point is, we realize that if you multiply a radical by itself, um, the radical cancels out. So um, looking back to problem number seven, if I need to make the radical go away, that would happen if I multiply by radical 15. Um, and that's okay as long as I do the same thing in the numerator, multiply by radical 15. So, as we just saw, if we do radical 15 times radical 15, that's just going to be 15. Now, in the numerator, we're just going to have negative 2 radical 15. All right, and that is the final answer. Please don't try to cancel out the 15s or anything like that. That's no good. Okay, um, let's see. Number 8, same type of thing we need to get rid of the radical in the denominator, we can multiply radical 5 by itself, which is okay as long as I do the same thing in the numerator. So radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. Radical 3 times radical 5 is radical 15. And there are no perfect squares that divide evenly into 15, so this is the final answer. And again, you cannot simplify. You, you can't divide something that's in a radical and something that's not under the radical. Okay. Um, all right, I think this video was long enough and this is a convenient place to stop the video. And I'll pick up uh, part two here with number nine. I'll see you on the next video. Join me back.